Okay, so for those of you studying basic algebra, you'll definitely have to be able to solve a problem like this. And hopefully this is easy for you. But uh, let's go and take a look at the problem. The problem is three times the sum of a number and two is 60. And we're looking for the number. Okay, so if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer here in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to fully explain this problem step by step. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And uh, it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this number. What is the number here? Well, the number is 18. So, of course, uh, I did indicate that we're going to have to use some algebra to solve this. Um, however, some of you uh, could have kind of just figured this problem out. Okay, and you're like, well, I kind of think I know what's going on here. Uh, nevertheless, the number is 18. So if you uh, solve this without algebra, that's great. Because uh, this particular problem is not that, I would say, complicated. Okay, however, these types of problems can certainly get much more complicated. And you'll definitely need to use some algebra to solve these. But uh, anyways, if you got 18 as your answer, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in translating. And that's what we're talking about here, translating um, a verbal phrase or verbal sentences into an algebraic sentence, okay? And that's what's kind of going on here is that we have a problem that is kind of described to us by words. Now, math is a language, and the whole idea uh, behind learning mathematics is to apply math into the real world so we can solve problems, right? Well, in the real world, we uh, describe problems by, you know, words, language, right? So we can translate a phrase like this into a mathematical problem and that is kind of the bigger uh, point of this particular problem. But uh, if you're a little bit confused, don't despair. I'm going to explain this right now. Okay, so first of all, we need to understand a few things here. We have three times. So we're going to have to just go through this step by step and translate uh, these ver this verbal phrase into an algebraic equation. But let's just kind of look at this problem uh, and just look at the words in the problem. So three times, times means what? Well, this is multiplication, right? Now here we have the sum, okay? Now we have to understand this word here, the sum. Anytime you see the word sum or difference in mathematics, I'm gonna tell you right now, you want to use parentheses, okay? So if I tell you the sum of two and uh, seven, Okay, the sum of two and seven would be two plus seven, but get in the habit of putting a uh, sum or difference. Okay, if you hear the, or you see the word difference, put this in parentheses. Okay, if you can remember this, this will save you a lot of pain because so many errors are caused when students do not use parentheses. This is a group. Okay, so we have three times the sum of a number and two is 60. Let's go ahead and take a look at another um, uh, word here, and that is is. Anytime you see the word is in a verbal situation, in terms of mathematics, that's always the equal sign. And now here we have a number, right? So what is a number? Well, here, this is where we can use algebra, and this is where we're going to want to use a variable. Okay, so you could pick any variable like x or y. I'm going to use the variable n to represent a number. Okay, that's what variables are. They're just uh, symbols that represent a number. We don't know what the number is, but we can use a variable just to kind of um, represent this particular number. So we can kind of build a nice equation from this, right? So three times the sum of a number and two is 60. I kind of gave you, uh, uh, you know, a good amount of hints here, an opportunity for you to do this on your own. So if you can build an equation, and that's what we're going to do here, is going to build an equation from this uh, sentence, 
And uh, let me go ahead and just write it this way. We're going to take this verbal phrase and build an algebraic equation and solve this equation for this uh, variable. Of course, that is the what we're looking for, the number, correct? Okay, so if you kind of see where I'm going with this, you're like, oh, okay, I get this. Well, then maybe pause the video and see if you can finish the problem out. But let's go ahead and take the next step. And the next step is going to be actually to build uh, an equation here, okay? All right, so three times the sum of a number. So here, we know we're going to have to multiply three times something. What are we going to multiply? Well, the sum of a, of, uh, the sum of a number and two, okay? So I'm going to start with this part, the sum of a number and two. We can represent this way. Now, of course, n is going to be equal to our number, okay? And the sum of a number and two, we can write it as n plus two. This is the sum of a, of a number and two. Again, remember, I'm using parentheses. Now, if you didn't use parentheses, this would be very confusing. So again, when you see sum or difference, put parentheses around this. So three times the sum, the sum of a number and two is this. This is three times the sum of a number and two is, this is our little equal sign right here, 60. Okay, so the sum of a number and two, or three times the sum of a number and two is 60. So this is what you want to do. Once you build an equation uh, from your verbal uh, sentence, kind of look at the equation and read it back to yourself and make sure that it matches the um, verbal uh, phrase. And if it does, then all we have to do now is focus on solving this equation. And uh, that is going to be our next step. Okay, but before we take those steps, I'm gonna ask you to take a very simple step and that is to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. You have no idea uh, of the positive impact this has on my YouTube channel. I really am trying to reach as many people as I possibly can because I just love teaching mathematics and I teach from basic math to advanced math. You'll find uh, a couple thousand plus videos on my YouTube channel. So please take advantage of this. But anyways, if you do this right here, I will look like this. I will be so ecstatic. My hair will probably stand up. Anyways, back to the problem. All right, so again, at this point, we know that this equation here represents the problem, okay? The verbal problem. Now we have an, uh, a basically an algebraic problem to solve. So we're gonna solve this equation for N. Let's go to do this now. So here, right here, this part of the equation is an example of where we have to use the distributive property. So we're gonna take this three, multiply by n, so that's three n, and then three times two is six. Now, if you're a little bit um, unsure of the steps to solve an equation like this, what we're talking about here is basic linear equations. And uh, I'm gonna leave links to my most popular courses in the description as well. So I teach all this stuff like in my pre-algebra or algebra one course, because that's kind of the level we're talking about here. But anyways, that's the first thing we need to do is take this three and multiply by n and two. So we have three n plus six is equal to 60. All right, so now what we need to do is subtract six from both sides of the equation. We're gonna isolate this three n here. So when we subtract uh, six from both sides of the equation, we're going to get what? Three n plus nothing is three n. 6 minus 6 is 0. We don't need to write that there. And 60 minus 6 is 54. All right, so the last step is to uh, divide both sides of the equation by 3. And when we do that, we got 54 divided by 3, and that is 18. So our mystery number is 18. Now let's go up here to our actual equation and uh, ask ourselves, does this answer make sense? You should always kind of look at your final answers and you know, ask yourself, hey, does this answer make sense? And you can see here, uh, you could quickly check this because if n is 18, we would plug in for n uh, in 18, right? So let's plug this uh, 18 in here. So now when you're doing the order of operations, remember PEMDAS, we have to do parentheses first, right? So 18 plus two is 20. And that 20 times 3, 3 times 20 is 60. 60 is equal to 60 over here. So that solution looks good. Okay, so this, again, is a very typical common type of algebra problem. You'll definitely see problems, a lot of problems like this in algebra. But hopefully, you know, this was easy for you to understand, even if you didn't know how to do this problem, okay? Just remember, whatever you struggle with in math, you can overcome, 
okay? It just might take more work, but the first kind of starting point when learning anything is getting clear and understandable instruction, and that's what I'm pa uh, passionate about. I really try to communicate things in a non-textbook type of way, right? In language that's, you know, easy to understand, right? We don't need to make this harder than it actually is. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.